Hello everyone. So I want to take some time to talk about the simple pendulum. And the reason it's called the simple pendulum is we go through a bunch of approximations to try to make the motion of the pendulum, which is actually quite complicated, fit within the structure of simple harmonic motion. In order to do this, the thing we use is there's going to be a lot of approximations. One of the approximations is the, is the, the uh, small angle approximation. But we're also going to make approximations about how the pendulum actually moves side to side. And when it's small oscillations, how it mostly just moves side to side and it actually doesn't move up that much. For a spring and mass system for Hooke's law, we, well, we had Hooke's law that actually told us exactly how the force came back to the middle. And one of the things is, is that force was proportional to X. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to find a force and approximate it so that it's proportional to x. So the first step of doing that is just to draw a free body diagram on the pendulum and think about the forces on it. So I have a pendulum drawn here, right? And what does this pendulum do? This, this, let's say this is the starting point of the pendulum and it swings down along this path, it gets to its bottom and then it swings up and it, it swings back and forth, right? Okay, so let's start by thinking about the forces that are on this pendulum. So we have the force of gravity acting down, right? So that's FG. Uh, what other force do we have? That doesn't look much like a G. Um, we have a tension force that is acting up along the rope. Okay. So those are the two forces we have. And we're going to make an observation here. So the observation is, is that the net force, if this is at the top of its, of its swing, the net force must be in this direction. Right? Because that's the way the pendulum wants to go, right? Perpendicular to T. The, the, the mass wants to go that way. So F net must be that way, right? That's, that's how Newton's second law works, right? If something has zero velocity, but it has a force, it moves in the direction the force is pointing. And so the pendulum's up here. It's going to start moving down to swing to the middle. So F net must be in that direction. And what this observation allows us to do is realize that the contribution to F net must be just solely due to the force of gravity. Okay, that's the thing that's going to make this thing go, that's going to restore it and make it go back to the middle. Okay. And so with that observation, we can actually realize, well, the contribution is actually this part of the force of gravity, right? So our goal is to find out what this leg, which must be equal to this, because there's nothing else for it to be equal to, is. So we know that there's some angle theta here, and we know that that same angle theta appears here. So it must mean that the force of gravity, which is equal to mg, it must mean that this component is mg sine theta right? Opposite over hypotenuse. So the thing we can write down is F net is equal to mg sine theta. So we have our, we have our first sort of step. We haven't done any approximations yet. So here are the two approximations we're going to do. So the first one we're going to do is assume that theta is small. So let's assume that this is small, and by small we mean theta much less than one. Theta in radians is much less than one. So we can approximate the F net is equal to mg theta. Okay. The second approximation comes with thinking about the motion of this pendulum, right? If theta is small, the pendulum doesn't actually go up and down that much for when it goes side to side. Right? Like it should just go up a little for how far it moves to the side. So the thing we're going to imagine is, well, imagine all the motion of the pendulum is just confined to some x direction. And there's some value here when, when the pendulum gets pulled to the side, there's some value x that, that it gets pulled to the side. And when it doesn't go up that much, it means that we can almost approximate all of these forces as just being in this plane, right? Like if theta is small, it means that these angles aren't that big. And it means that 
everything is pretty much along this purple line. So to state that, we're gonna say, well, F net is actually approximately equal to Fx, just the force in the x direction. And this is equal to mg theta. Okay. But with that, we also notice that, well, if this angle is small, then this distance and this distance are pretty close to each other, right? Those are pretty close to each other, right? This is some distance x, and this is the, this is the arc length of this. So if I have a pendulum of length L, right, I can use my arc length formula, S is equal to theta L, and I can use the fact that S is really close to X to say that, well, X is almost theta L. So we can use this to write Fx is equal to mg over L times X. And so what do we have? We have a restoring force, F of X. Ah, and what direction is it pointing in? F of X is pointing this way, right? F of X wants to point along, along the negative X direction. If X is pointing that way, F of X wants to point this back. So I actually wasn't very careful and I missed a negative sign here. So what do I have? I have F x which when the the mass gets displaced to the side some position x then there's a restoring force that points in the direction opposite of x that wants to push the pendulum back to the middle okay so this is a really important formula so let's just copy and paste this formula here and let's see what we can get well what does this imply in terms of simple harmonic motion so we want to connect this to what we know about simple harmonic motion. So what does this imply? This implies that the mass times the acceleration, right? That's what fx is, acceleration in the x direction, is equal to negative mg over L times x. Or, you know, the m's cancel out, and we see we get this. Well, compare this to simple harmonic motion. Remember, from simple harmonic motion, we have the acceleration in the x direction is equal to negative omega squared times x, right? The position. And so this implies that omega is equal to the square root of g over l for these pendulum systems. So this is, this is how to attach the physics of the pendulum to simple harmonic motion. But you notice in order to get here, we had to make a bunch of approximations. What were those approximations? We had to assume that it was a small angle. And along with that small angle, we had to assume that the arc motion, S, was actually the same as the horizontal motion, X. The arc motion, S, is the same as X. And that all of these forces were just happening in the X direction. And you can see that if the angle were small, right, if it were small, then all these forces would just be acting like that, right? What I've drawn here isn't really the small angle approximation because I, I had to make it big so you could see. But there were a bunch of approximations that went into it. Um, so there's a small angle approximation, then the realization that x were equal to x. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is actually connect the motion of the pendulum to the equation we've been using for simple harmonic motion. So I've drawn the pendulum again. And what we know is that this pendulum goes back and forth like this, right? Just going back and forth swinging. And what I want to do is I want to map that back and forth swinging onto the picture that we have for a cosine and simple harmonic motion. So remember, this is our x of t. It's tough to write sideways. And remember, we turn our head to look at this. And so what do we have? We have the oscillation starting here. So as we go back and forth and the angle is small, it's described by this cosine. So we have x of t is equal to a cosine omega t plus phi. There can still be a phi. And the difference is, is that our omega is now the square root of g over l. And we can do all of the same things with this 
that we did when we had this mathematical description. I should say that this description only holds for the simple pendulum where we've made all of these approximations about the motion. The real pendulum is a little more complicated. 